The Jam Our Story is a racy, readable account of one of our most influential bands from the late 70s, early 80s. Here to throw a little bit more light on the book and tell us why they wrote it are Rick Buckler, former right. drummer, and Bruce Foxton, Hi, Gary. the former bass slapper. Now we're here on stage. Bass slapper? Both uh, bass slapper. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now here we are on stage at the marquee, but this isn't the marquee, the famous marquee where the jam Sadly played. not. Sadly not. It's been long knocked down apparently. But there you go. Now my first question has to be to both of you, you know, why another book on the jam? I mean, wasn't Paolo Hewitt's A Beat Concerto meant to be, you know, the sort of authorised biography? Rick, can we start uh, with you? Yeah, it was really. But I mean, our involvement was, was, was quite minuscule in that really. And there's been other books written you know, by people outside of the jam. We've given their account of things. And we thought it was about time that we actually did put our side of the story, you know. The jam's still got such a huge following anyway. You know, new young people are still buying the records. I mean, like the greatest hit album, which was out, or greatest hit, greatest hits album. There are a few. <laughs> which was out, there are a few. Which was out um, two years ago. It sold like 300,000 plus now. And it's just an incredible interest still out there. The jam for that era portrayed that era better than any other band, probably. Reading the book for me, I mean, there were things that, um, that I didn't even know. One which really, really um, surprised me Here was that go. the jam actually auditioned for Opportunity Knox. Is this true? Uh, it is. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yeah. well, <laughs> Tell me more, tell me more. And you didn't get through? No, no, they didn't want us, no. Did you feel, Rick, um, Bruce, that um, the Hello, band... Hello, I'm <laughs> 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 Did you feel that, um, you know, that, that not only the jam, but, you know, the rest of the bands, the Clash and the Pistols, were changing things? I think so. I think so. I mean, it, it was just like the old new broom. It really was time, you know, sort of mid-70s for a, a good old clear-out of existing bands that were around. It was all a bit too staid and a bit boring. And it was a very exciting time. I mean, I think when we um, first went to the 100 Club and saw bands like the Clash and the Pistols, we were just about getting on... The, the London circuit ourselves, and I think it really gave Paul a really strong direction into how the jam should carry on from there. Toilet humour played a very large part in the jam's history. Again, something that I didn't know. It's a bit of an eye-opener, this book. Um, Rick, <laughs> do you want to tell us the damned story? Do I have to? Yes. <laughs> in a nutshell. All right. Um, well, we'd heard through the grapevine that the dam got their album out and we'd just got air album out and we'd heard through the grapevine they were going to send us a copy of the album and we thought you know we sort of heard that it was going to be a bit outrageous what they were going to do to it so we weren't going to be outdone so um do i have to tell this story this is disgusting i don't oh, want no. to tell this it's story. okay your mum won't be watching <laughs> it's late night tv so you know we decided we'd send them a copy of air album which we did you know plus a few extras you know i had to go to the loo to do that but um I mean, it sat in the out tray over the weekend, I believe, before it got posted. And, uh, of course, I think Monday morning I was saying, we've, we actually received this thing from the damned, and it was just had jam smeared on the inside of it and a few silly drawings, you know. And we've gone right over the top, basically. I mean, do you feel that um, the jam realised their full potential? Do you think there could have been more to be done? Um, well, it is, obviously, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since, you know, the demise of the band in 82. But yeah, I think Rick and myself were tend to feel that, I mean, we, we were very quality control conscious in terms of what we released, you know, single by single. I totally agree that it was nice to go out at the top with a number one album, number one single, etc. But having said that, I think we still had another year or so left in us. Rick, can you remember what your reaction was when, um, you know, Paul sort of like decided to, uh, to pull the plug on the band? Yeah. Um... I mean, it was a bit of a blow. It was almost one of those things that you don't believe, you know. And I don't think it actually really sank in until, um, you know, the jam had had their last party. We'd done all the last tour, you know, the gigs and everything, and Wembley and such on. Um, and then realising that there was, you know, nothing else. Do you subsequently feel bitter about, um, you know, the way that you've been sort of treated from um, the Weller camp? Not bitter, because, I mean, you know, we don't hold Paul responsible for our careers now. Um, Obviously, I mean, you can theorise about why he called it a day, again, till the cows come home, um, if it was to go off and join the, the Style Council. Because cows going home. <laughs> right. The Style Council, well, then he probably was right, because I don't think Rick and myself, although we could have adapted ourselves, ourselves as musicians to that style of music, it really wasn't our cup of tea. But there hasn't been much contact, in fact, very, very little with, um, with Paul himself. Why do you think that is? 
I don't know, that's been something that's uh, mystified us. You know, cause we, we broke up amicably enough, I and mean, we you know, accepted the fact that Paul wanted to go off and do something different and, and what have you, but um, when it came to sort of saying hello, or, you know, um, yeah, the Christmas side cards, of and, yeah, really we thought, amusing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we thought that might have carried on, you know. But we just found it very, very difficult to, uh, it wasn't to keep in touch with him. Yeah. He made no effort to keep in touch with us, let's put it that way. Remember Steed, Purdy and Gambit? I'm afraid I'm old enough to.